I'd like to give you a, a very warm welcome to our Psychology Prize ceremony tonight. We're so honored to have a man that has spent his life protecting the lemurs of Madagascar. And, <laughs> Professor Jonah Rachmavasi really embodies the principles that Psychology does. And we're so grateful that you're here tonight to honor him. And we welcome you. And we're so honored to have you here. My name is Paul Allen Cox. I'm chairman of the uh, Psychology Foundation. And because of this special uh, Psychology Prize tonight and a birthday I have coming up uh, uh, tomorrow, <laughs> I've invited every one of my children here and my wife, Barbara. Could you all stand, please? There they are. Thank you. Psychology began when Barbara and I and our children were in a very remote village in Samoa called Savai. I was studying medicinal plants that the native peoples used, and we had an amazing research breakthrough. Together with my colleagues at the National Cancer Institute, we found that one of the little trees in that rainforest held a compound that could be used to treat HIV AIDS resulting in prostratin, which our colleagues, I'm a Cal man, but my uh, good friends at Stanford have, thank you, yeah. <laughs> Particularly Professor Paul Winder in the chemistry department have now made a thousand times more effective. Everything was great. We had so much fun. The kids, we just brought my research gear and their home, their, their textbooks. We had what we called hut school for recess. They could just go across the white sand beach and play in the tide pools. Everything was great. <clears throat> and then the loggers showed up. And these aren't like Paul Bunyan type guys. They, they come up with bulldozers and chains and giant chainsaws destroying the forest. We went up to look at it. The villagers were all weeping. I asked them, why, why did you let these guys in there? And they said, the chief said, well, we have to build a new school. We're a poor village. These loggers, amazing, amazing, offered them exactly the amount that school would cost to build, $85,000. So I said to uh, the chiefs, what if Barbara and I could raise that money? Could you uh, stop these loggers? Well, what if we raise the money to build a school? Boom. They send two chiefs with machetes up to chase this whole logging from away. <laughs> And if you've seen one angry Samoan, you times that by two, <laughs> you can see why these loggers were out of there. And I came home to Barbara with good news and bad news. Good news was that we had saved a 30,000 acre lowland rainforest. Bad news was that we'd have to sell our house, our car, and perhaps one of those children, because <laughs> we didn't have long to raise the money. You know if your marriage is working at a moment like that. Barbara took my hand, looked my eyes, and said, Paul, how often in our lifetime will we have a chance to do something like this? Let's go for it. So together we left off the cliff. Word spread among our family and friends that we were going to cash out. I was a professor. And uh, then I met a really uh, influential person in my life. Uh, I met uh, Ken Murdoch. Ken had founded, because of an illness in his family, probably the most important herbal medicine, plant medicine company in the United States. And um, Ken, would you stand up for a second? I want people to get a good look at you here. This is Ken Murdoch. Okay, well, we'll stop that. I probably touched something wrong. I'm pretty good with a machete, but this technology is beyond me. So, uh, Ken was there with his lawyer, Lauren Israelson, and he said, well, what can I do for you? I said, what, can we, what, what are we going to talk about? I said, I don't care what we talk about as long as I walk out of here with a check to help save the rainforest. Ken, being a very shrewd business person, said, what do I get for this check? I said, absolutely nothing. In fact, as a condition of writing that check, you have to sign a paper announcing all land rights in the rainforest. Then Ken said, it's not every day I get an offer like that. Tell me more. 
So Ken, another dear friend, Rex Mon, my family, my friends, all chipped in. And just in a matter of weeks, I returned to Samoa with $85,000 on my backpack. We marched with the villagers, several hundred of them, up to the logging company. They said to the logging company, never return again. Wow. And we didn't even lose our house. How about that? So Ken, in so many ways, Barbara helped found this. Ken was so great. A business guy came and he said, I don't know how to save rainforest or anything like that, but I know how to create 501c3 not-for-profit organizations. You're our man. We said that was Bill Murray who came up with the word ecology because we wanted to protect the interface between forests and coral reef. We wanted to protect oceanic islands. The next great step that happened was the advent of Dwayne Silverstein and his staff who were amazing. We ran the best we could with everything being volunteer. Dwayne showed up and then all of you folks came on with this idea. Dwayne's going to tell you in a minute how we now have done this same idea 400 times. We've built in 68, 69 countries, or 68 countries around the world, the same idea that we're going to partner with indigenous people. It's not a charity. It's not a handout. We make actually a business deal with them. We want you to protect that forest. We want you to protect that reef. And in return, we'll build you a school. We'll build, we'll pay for a community center. We'll build a little medical clinic. We'll build a water supply. Every country we go, because we don't get involved in the politics, we don't mess with the culture. That's all we want to do is a deal, a win-win deal. And, you know, I'm a scientist in my day job, so I could do maybe two of these projects a year, Dwayne came on crime. I mean, what are we up to this year, Dwayne? It's like, no, but this year alone, we're 26 projects, you know? And now, and then we felt, God, you know, these indigenous people, and I've got to really tell you, I wish we could fill this room with our friends, the villagers in Madagascar, because they are 100% partners with us. And our professor here has spent his life on the same effort because he realizes to protect these resources, you've got to engage the indigenous people. And he's an expert at that. The first ecology prize we gave for heroism in protecting the environment and protecting the culture happened in my bedroom. And not my bedroom, it happened in. <laughs> There's a little bit more here than building a school. It helped, it helped in our, have in our living room with Ulu Tau Fasasina. We've been to, to Stockholm. Unfortunately, although I love the Swedes, their nature foundation was, was negative against the culture. And uh, so I called Barbara from Stockholm. I said, get everybody we know, bring them in the living room, get a trophy. We're going to give this guy a prize. That was the first ecology prize to Ulu Tau Fasasina. We recognize him as our top tier of people who make gifts to uh, Psychology as the Chief Ulu Fellows. Every one of you here have either been in those villages or you have helped support this great effort. And so it gives me such pleasure to welcome you tonight, to welcome our prize winner, and particularly to welcome a, a hero, a modern hero of conservation, Dwayne Silverstein. So Dwayne, please. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming. And I'd like to add my welcome as well. A welcome to all of you who are here. A welcome to all of you throughout the world that are watching this being streamed live. And un, uh, una bienvenida especial a todos los hablantes de español que están mirando esta ceremonia en todo el mundo. OK, then I'll leave that to Jonah. <laughs> And uh, I can't think of a more fitting day to honor a real hero, a real hero from Madagascar uh, than Indigenous Peoples Day. So that's a very, very happy coincidence for us. As is our tradition, we usually take this opportunity to tell you a little bit, there isn't enough time, a little bit about our progress during the last year. So let's, uh, let's begin with that. 
And there we go. So as uh, Paul mentioned, we now have over 400 projects in 68 countries around the world. Uh, we have saved over 1.4 million acres, uh, both uh, terrestrial and marine ecosystems. We have 26 part-time field representatives, and we do this all with only eight full-time staff. Okay, let's begin with talking about two of our major initiatives. First one, it takes place in the Cook Islands. It's called Marae Moana. That is the world's largest multi-use marine park. Uh, it is 800,000 square miles, about the size of Mexico. Though if you added the total landmass of all the islands of the Cook Islands, it's an area the size of Rhode Island. So this is a tremendous leverage opportunity. The country in its wisdom established this marine reserve, but we know from uh, research and from talking to colleagues that these marine parks only work if the people are solidly behind them. So we launched an, a nationwide public education campaign. And of course, part of the campaign is uh, social digital media, of which there's a lot of coverage. And this is uh, an outreach to Aitutaki, which is an uh, um, atoll off of uh, the main island and is reportedly one of the most beautiful lagoons in the entire world. And I believe it is having been there. And the person with his back to the camera is last year's Goldman Prize, uh, Psychology Prize recipient, uh, Kevin Eero. And, uh, and he is the biggest sports hero in the history of this country. Very, very famous international rugby player. So when he shows up, people listen. And then as part of this, we, had, uh, we have a uh, poster contest. Uh, this one again in Aitutaki. And also, as some of you have heard before, uh, we're almost, we're about three weeks from completion of the world's largest, not the world's, the South Pacific's largest mural, which is completely dedicated to Murray Moana with each panel uh, showing highlights of the marine life and the legends of each of the 16 Cook Islands. So this project is going great guns, highly leveraged, not very expensive, but doing uh, miraculous work. Our second and even bigger uh, national initiative takes place in the Dominican Republic, the National Mangrove Initiative. Mangroves are very, very, very important for the environment. They help greatly reduce the damage caused by uh, cyclones and uh, uh, tsunamis and, and all that from their extended roots. That's what does the trick there. They are nurseries for fish that go on to populate coral reefs. And uh, they also sequester a tremendous amount of carbon per hectare, one of the top ecosystems in doing that. So they're a great tool in fighting global warming. The trouble is most local people, no matter what country where there are mangroves, don't really know this. They just think of mangroves as these places that can be a little smelly and have mosquitoes. And so who cares about them? So it's very important to have the public understand what's happening in order to save these mangroves. A key part of this initiative we call Play for the Mangroves. It involves the interchange of sports equipment, sports training, sports games in exchange for the kids doing something on behalf of the mangroves. And what you see in this case is a mangrove planting, which a lot of the kids have done. And what happens before these plantings is they get a lecture, a fun lecture, from somebody telling them about not just how to do this, but the value of mangroves. This particular one in Las Calderas took place uh, quite close to a naval base. And much to our pleasant surprise, right after the kids started planting these, the commander of the naval base issued some orders in Spanish, and 80 so troops came in and started planting uh, with the kids. So this is just really grassroots from the community. It's the kids, it's the sailors, everybody working together. And the kids are so enthusiastic. I kind of remember, you know, ancient history, my days in high school, if you were on a field trip or whatever, you did a little work when the teacher was looking and when the teacher turned around, you kind of goofed off. And here it wasn't the case at all. These kids wanted to go out further and further to plant these mangroves. They were so excited. 
and this is what they get in return, these, the shirts, the sports equipment, and Dominican Republic is a sports crazy country. Now, uh, eyeballing these projects, uh, staff members and I visited four or five of them, it just seems to be working beyond belief, but we don't wanna just rely on our, our eyes. So this year we're completing a, a two year controlled study to see if this really works. We are piloting this project for the second time in the Philippines this year and maybe elsewhere around the world. We think we have a real uh, tiger by the tail there. Another thing we did is uh, had a very rare for Dominican Republic fun run. And this was on a, a, a small town near a small town in the north. And we didn't know what to expect. We thought 30 or 40 people would show up. And the day we get there, we heard that 80 people had signed up. And when, by the time the fun run started, there were 150 people running. And you can see in this picture, they were very careful with, this is through the mangroves, but they put temporary boards there so the mangrove roots would not be destroyed. And it was another great community activity. Uh, also part of the initiative, this traveling photo ex exhibition of terrific mangroves photos. And as an interesting side uh, benefit, uh, the always unintended consequences in any project. We've had a few of them, mostly have been quite nice. In this case, the project led to the discovery of a new species of lizard that you see there. And not only is this a new species, it's, it's the first and only member of its genus right now. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so moving on from there, we now go to some high project highlights. And this one, I, I can thank so many of you are here, who are here. And this has to do with the Sri Lanka Mangrove Museum. Many years ago, as part of an overall campaign in Sri Lanka, we funded the construction of the world's first mangrove museum. As some of you may know, uh, two or three years ago, the economy of Sri Lanka really melted down. And I'm not talking about a recession or anything like that. There was not enough petrol, enough money to buy petrol. People couldn't leave their houses. People couldn't feed themselves adequately. So the museum got shut down between that and COVID. And what we decided to do every year, some of you know, may know, we have an Earth Day in April uh, crowdfunding campaign for a project. So we said, why don't we try to raise enough money to keep this museum, to reopen it, and keep it open for two years, total turnkey, paid for everything. And that's because of the generosity of so many people here were able to raise that money. This museum is now reopened, as you can see from that photo, and they have a nice auditorium there, you know, for lectures, etc. Lots of programs for kids about mangroves. And these are all taken in the last few months since uh, the museum was reopened on uh, World Mangrove Day, July 26th of this year. Okay, this is our first project in Western Africa and the Tiko Limbe Islands in Cameroon. We're a little nervous because we never did a project there before, but it has gone terrifically. It involves the exchange of protection of almost 5,000 acres of mangroves for the provision of fish dryers, fish refrigeration supplies, and other, other uh, needed uh, items for the community. Um, and so that's just going, uh, just going extremely, extremely well. We're very happy about that project. And here's a photo of the delivery of some of these uh, fish cooling devices right there. And that's our field representative on the right. And now I'm gonna turn things over to our wonderful program manager, Mary uh, Randolph, to tell us about a few more projects. So Mary. Hi everybody, thank you Duane. I'm so happy that we're here and not Zooming, I can't tell you. Um, so I'm gonna talk about a few of our sort of regular projects now that Duane has talked about the big initiatives. And the first one uh, is, involves this lizard. This is a, a Utila spiny-tailed iguana. It only lives on Utila Island in Honduras, and it's critically endangered. And one of the reasons, or this photo illustrates one of the reasons that it's critically endangered, because I took this photo from about six or eight feet away. They don't run. And so they have always been caught for food down there. They're not unlike the other iguanas, which will take off when you see them so they have that's an issue um, for this population also their habitat is shrinking they only live in the mangroves so if the mangroves go away um, so does the this iguana 
And also the, the serious problem most recently is that someone had pet raccoons. You, you know where that's going, right? Uh, so they got out, there's hundreds of them now and they eat them. So because there's all these different issues, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different approaches you need to do um, when you're looking at trying to save this critically endangered species. So we're partnering with an NGO down there. They're planting mangroves um, to help the habitat stabilize. And they're doing a really good job. They did, they planted a lot of them last winter when it was rainy. I, I was down there a few months ago and got to see. And another thing that they're doing is outreach, uh, education in the schools. They go into the schools about a week every month and have all kinds of programs. And they've been really creative. They made up a kind of a bingo game with endangered species. So the kids learn about uh, endangered species and the, not just the lizards, but the iguanas, but you know, the whole ecosystem. And they also created um, this cartoon character, Swampy. Swampy the Swamper, because um, the lizards down, the iguanas down there are known by, they're called swampers. And so instead of just something that is a meal, now, you know, the iguana can become a symbol. It's unique to this island. It's a small island. Um, it's, you know, it's an example of why psychology only works on islands, right? If this species disappears from this island, it's gone forever from the whole world. So it's getting that message across to kids. And you see Swampy everywhere um, around the island on these signs. And he has advice about, you know, Kind of sunscreen you should wear it's safe for the reef and not to litter and so it's becoming a symbol of pride and a friendlier face to the iguana so i think they're doing a great job another project that has outreach as a significant component is this project in greece in the northern cyclades islands off the east coast of greece and the environmental focus there is seagrass so the mediterranean seagrass forms these giant beds these are flowering plants that flower underwater and they make these huge beds they're huge carbon sinks for one thing and they they store more uh carbon per area than any forest on, on land by many fact many uh times and also they are just really the foundation of that mediterranean marine ecosystem um some animals eat them the the uh, the plants themselves, others, it's habitat for, if you take it away, it's just, it's sand. You don't have the, that vibrant ecosystem. And the big issue there is a lot of anchors drop on there and people don't even know boat, um, captains don't even realize that the anchors are dropping in the seagrass and they rip out huge swaths of it. And it's very slow growing. So it's very hard to repair those scars. So this is really bringing awareness um, about this issue because the government hasn't done much. And if there's more awareness that can support policy changes as well down the road. So they've done all kinds of outreach. Again, they go in the schools, talk to kids. They developed a curriculum that's so popular that all these schools are asking for it. So it's nice ripple effect from that. And they do lots of events. Um, they uh, they have told me about if you know some of these events they're doing a different a bunch of islands around there. And at one, I think they were working with some kids, and a girl walked by, and she had been in the program like months before, and she was so excited when she saw it that she kind of joined the group and started telling all the kids there about the stuff she had learned. So it's really nice to see that kind of enthusiasm, and you just you know it's going to spread. So you're gonna hear a lot about Madagascar tonight uh, and it's an amazing place. Um, and we're always really happy when we can do projects there because the biodiversity is just off the charts. Most plants and animals in Madagascar don't exist anywhere else, only that island. Uh, so this community we worked with um, is protecting a large area of forest there. And what they're protecting it from mostly is wildfire. That's the big danger there. So they patrol it and they have installed a fire break. They built a fire break um, so that if there's a fire in the savannah area nearby, it won't spread. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a big area and this forest is just full of, of amazing plants and animals. There are lemurs, uh, including endangered lemurs. There's a, a fusa, which is a Madagascar carnivore that kind of looks like a dog, kind of looks like a cat. It's not really related to either one of them. It's just, you know, amazing, um, amazing plants and animals there. So, um, Again, we're really happy that we can we can preserve that and the community, a lot of these people in the community have never had an education, they never had a chance. Um, they had, might not even be able to read and write a lot of them, and so what they wanted for their kids was a school. Uh, they wanted a nice school to replace a very dilapidated one that they had and now they have it. And they sent us this picture to say thank you, and of course we want to say thank you to them because they're the ones who are doing the conservation, but we're just so happy to support them and and see the kids get this nice school. So these 
these things in the trees that kind of looks like plastic bags or something. Um, those are bats. They're giant bats. They have a five foot wingspan. So do I, I guess. Actually. Um, and they're uh, they're the world's probably the world's biggest bat. And they're fruit eaters. And they eat mostly figs. And they are endangered. Uh, they tend to be sensitive to human interference. So when there's a lot of human activity around, they retreat. Uh, so the p community here is conserving the mangroves where they live, where the bats live, and they're doing that because they have um, started an ecotourism effort. So they have a, a strong incentive to keep the wildlife there, and it's the kind of ecotourism project that we really like because it's locally controlled, it's wildlife based, the benefits stay in the community, it's very well thought out, um, there's a lot of people involved in it. And so they're protecting this area that's the habitat of this bat, and of course other species as well will benefit. And uh, they all they wanted with the Ecology Grant was um, some money to fix up the watchtower and the ranger station that will help them preserve it. So we were happy to fund that in exchange. So this is um, the the neighborhood of Tikabandu village in Malaysian Borneo and it's just beautiful as you can see and I was lucky enough to get to go there in August with a bunch of people most of whom are here tonight actually. Uh, and so this is on kind of on the way up to Mount Kinabalu the biggest mountain in Borneo so Borneo is sort of like Madagascar in the sense it's got amazing biodiversity right it's there's more in an acre there of species of, of trees for example than there might be in, in all of Europe um, so you know orangutans, um, hornbills, amazing wildlife there. Um, so we worked with a village there and they're protecting a huge area of primary forest um, up in the mountains. And it's a really well-organized uh, village. They actually sued a logging company a few years ago about illegal encroachments. And they took them five years, but they won. And that's almost unheard of there. So they're very well organized and determined. And we got to go there uh, and we went down to the river and we planted some trees and they fed us a lunch with food that had been gathered in the forest. And uh, there was a lot of rice wine and dancing and uh, it was just great. And the people, they were so um, grateful for this help. Um, and they used a grant to build a, a center um, to welcome tourists there as well, because they're using old uh, rattan gathering trails. Uh, to turn them into tourist trails and they're already getting people to come there and they'll put some chalets so that people can stay overnight and they're really again developing this with an eye to keeping the forest but using the forest in traditional ways and taking care of it. The last village uh, I want to talk about the last project I want to talk about um, is in Fiji and also just visited that Duane and I got to um, go down there and with some psychology supporters. I won't go into all the history, but it's an amazing history um, of Rambi Island. The people there are not ethnically Fijian. They were deposited there by force after World War II from another island about 2,000 kilometers away called Banaba that's now part of Kiribati. And the reason was uh, a little complicated, but basically their home island was wrecked by phosphate mining. So they were left here with nothing. They've had to rebuild. They've struggled, as you can imagine, um, for all these years. So it's a poor place and uh, there aren't many jobs there. There's not a lot to do. A lot of people just do subsistence farming and fishing. They were delighted to find out that they could preserve forest and get a grant from Seacology to build a community hall. They really didn't have anything, any kind of public space at all. There was a tiny little, um, I guess you could call it a community center, but it was literally falling apart, falling in. Um, and so they're protecting a big area of forest that's their watershed. And they were, um, it's especially needing a protection because there was a custom where people could go and uh, cut down some of the forest if they want to grow kava to sell on the mainland. So now this area is protected. They're also planting some mangroves down at the coast. And so um, they built this hall and the name um, means basically a place to follow your dreams. So it's really lovely. It's a word in there in the language, um, not Fijian language. Um, so they're protecting this big forest and we have a little video. Um, so this is how we got there. And uh, when we got there, there were hundreds of people waiting for us from four villages. Um, and there's the community hall, as you can see. So we had a little ribbon cutting uh, by one of the supporters on the trip, unveiled a plaque that they had made that thanks Ecology for, for building the hall. 
then we just basically ate for many hours and um, there was so much food uh, and but there was some other entertainment and dancing they have a brass band there which was not expecting uh, they play, they played for us doing made it. So with that, I'll turn it over to Duane or more dancing, possibly. I don't know. Thank you, Mary, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so now I want to talk a little about some upcoming trips we have. If you want to join me in dancing with Fijian people, we will be there on December 4th to 12th in, in Fiji trip co-sponsored by the California Academy of Sciences, by the way, our second trip with them and it worked really well. And uh, perhaps you don't wanna dance with me, you just wanna make fun of me dancing, that's still welcome as well. And then we haven't announced this one publicly yet, but on May 10th through 17th, we will be visiting Curacao on a kind of uh, a scoping out trip to see uh, some projects, potential projects there. And that's in the uh, ABC Islands, Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao in the south of the Caribbean, actually quite close to, the, to Venezuela, in fact. You could find out more about those trips on our, our website travel page and wanna introduce two groups of unsung heroes. These are 26 of the, the field representatives we have around the world. We have Eric Patel, one of them right here with us today from Madagascar, not coincidentally, but but uh, without them, there would be no psychology, and we can't thank them enough. And I know many of them are watching around the world. So thank you so much for doing what you do. And uh, another group I'd like to acknowledge is the, uh, the staff of psychology, very small staff. And uh, with them, we do everything you've seen, including the 400 Project. So could members of the psychology staff please stand up to get acknowledged, please? Thank you for your terrific work. And now I want to introduce our next speaker. Uh, it's Ken Murdoch, who, as you've already heard from Paul, is the co-founder of Psychology, the vice chairman of Psychology, and underwrites the Psychology Prize. And that is not just the $10,000 stipend that the, each winner gets each year, but the whole shebang, all the, the food, the rental of this place, and all that. So. Uh, you should know that after this ceremony is completed, there will be a dessert reception upstairs. And I uh, have learned over the years that when uh, you know that Ken has paid for the food, it just tastes that much better. So I urge you to stay and uh, uh, stuff your face on Ken's dollar. But with that, I'd like to introduce Ken Murdoch. Oh my gosh. You guys are hilarious. It's great. So much humor in this organization and so many uh, great hearts. Really, really good people throughout the world. And, and uh, you hit it right on the, on the head with your introduction of our great people, our field people, and our, and our office staff. This is a highlight of my year to come here and uh, be here with all of you. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight to honor this year's recipient, Dr. Jonah Ratsambazafi. Luckily for us, he likes to go as Dr. Jonah. So <laughs> it'll make things a lot easier. But uh, some of these names stick in your mind, like Anurata Rikamasinga, you know, I really, I can't forget exist. I'm surprised I didn't say that instead of his name because it sticks in my mind so well from the past. This is the 32nd consecutive year that Psychology has given a Psychology Prize to an exceptional island conservationist. We are especially delighted to do so tonight because this is the first time since 2019 that we've been able to meet here together to celebrate this event with the recipient. 
the real highlight. Over the years, we have honored islanders from 20 countries. Each of these extraordinary leaders and have unique stories, each one. Some have fought to stop reckless development that could damage the forest or the reefs or the ecosystem. Some have devoted their lives to helping the islanders earn a living without jeopardizing fragile coastal ecosystems. Although their stories are different, each one has a tale of persistence and in some cases, much risk, but always with hope. That is certainly true here tonight. Dr. Jonah is an outspoken champion of both Madagascar's endangered wildlife and its impoverished people. That makes him very unpopular with corrupt politicians, powerful mining and timber interests, and the criminal enterprises. His life has been threatened more than once. Dr. Jonah works to put the people of Madagascar, not the outsiders, in charge of protecting the island's unique biodiversity. The NGO he established there works with the people in poor communities, explaining conservation and helping develop sustainable livelihoods for them. Dr. Jonah clearly has a very special bond with his amazing home island, its animals and its people. And I think his particular love is the lemur, which is my greatest memory from my visit to Madagascar. Beautiful animal. My special, special connection with the islands comes from my years that I lived in the South Pacific. I was lucky enough to live there in that beautiful region of the world, and I fell in love. Several of my ancestors also lived in the South Pacific and came to care deeply about its people and its islands and the environment. So tonight I am honored to underwrite Psychology Prize in memory of my mother, Lalavi, a Samoan name, Lalavi Fish Murdoch. And now, Psychology is pleased to award the 2023 Psychology Prize to Jonah Ratsambazafi for his innovative ideas and many years of work in protecting the unique environments of Madagascar. Please sit back and enjoy a short video first regarding Dr. Jonah. So they're calling to say that this is our territory. We are here. They have to fight strongly to push other individuals to intrude in their territory. A family group of lemurs composed by the mother and the father. The older baby can stay in the family group until he or she reaches the age of maturity. The father and the mother stay for life. So the male must leave the natal group to look for another group to form a new family. That's how it works. Lemurs are so beautiful. The problem is, when the forest is getting smaller and smaller, it is hard for them to find a new territory, to create a new family. They are like us, like human beings. They need space.
Itande, tamfutona, natungava ni, razambe ni, le miliente to Madagascara, entre 47 et 54 millions d'années, fla dan zavatras, tsingeva na vegetation, mar na vezan sa tsmar. Only God knows. God knows. De ne evolue na me famia na gdim. Roariftona. Tond lasa na tungava nyumbel. Mas a voaz ya, fen bibi. Sanctuaire de la nature. Tito eranti, mis bibi, misi karazana varj, ronzat klau. Saya kini ada di Israel, nak numpukan anak putih yang fener di Israel, nak durun fener di Israel, dia ini nak ikutin ni alas sisa tak virat mata kasar dia faham sekarang full sensat ni si full mayer ni sani farke sani dia tahu nak ulang tamigan, faham fit ambil full ni kerana nak farke nan zavn. Tantara sis and tolan sis. Fanya la yel chim zana wala yel fatu mati mila mano zavat. Isa kana na zamba sisi un zantun ammanarak. Uwe tazo misi ndala na tena yenzan. Wir haben eine Mille Villa, eine Putte, die wir haben, 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 die wir haben. Ari, die Lanceur d'Alerte in Madagascar, die hat auch eine Nisse, die wir haben, 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 Kamu ada kasar ni faham zawar zain cuma kivia, bulan zaton mana faham kamu ada kasar. Zaza ni ada kasar setanyad, hari cerar ni, raa anis anda fikir na dimat anda tetap buntan, anak anak sih, nunda sekarang politik semua lama, fanggalarana, diman sar manzaka, fan rana na ni bib malakas ni hari na malakas ya, diman antanul, hari faham antanul, empty stomach has no ears. Sumpah tu vendor firen yang nanti mis sakaf wah mis itu Madagaskar. Madagaskar tu kau ni isa firen nama Tanzak. Ati Afrika, ati Amerika ni dia. Tiga tu mana Tour Eiffel, tiga tu mana Statue de Liberté, tiga tu mana Mur de Chine, tiga tu mana Pyramid de Gibt. Nila Murian, Varka, mana nanti kia, arah nanti kia mana kan? Madagaskar apa kau mien? Nun fana nanti kian ro, Varka, seru tanala, seru orang nanti kreo. When they see people, they run away because they are afraid that people kill them. Kare fa manta nul na na desat nyar yaro ande bib na desat nyar si kapa az chuma chuma no zani voteris fa chuma nani. Nul la teti de zata nandu kapal tefi viluma nul. Di fanyeng ni ada ketam dada naita tunggu tanti alati. Bola nyeng ketam janda sekatawe dur taneti fezana bibze far piana nasatib. Arzeni nani diawanai? Si ke siapa kai tiat calav? Si main sentat cano ya nom sarai nom fiana ni asati. Zuat si ke mana nasi kul cara? Zuat si ke mit sana miopital cara? Zuat si ke ni ana nom mana nasi chan cara? Yom tanya, semet zan. Rabu tunggu tu tu ser. Mar na fani cefi familyan. Nibu tu nanti ni ser paman nuan antrio ha, mufil tina ni am fan mizana. Jaza ni telu ha, di tina panibale. Sepanu pandur, nu manapak, nu sorpon, nu tau. 
Pamzunga zao dia tsy manonga zany tsy zay tia manatsara ny ny velitena tia ny toko tsy mampody kala tsy natao zao tsy zay ny fa izy mamy maro ny ny resaka flera ampesena amin'ny matoky flera nazy. Pedy peny flera io, izay matonga ny tatela tia afa misy le tsiro ny tatela maro zany zany amin'ny resaka flera pedy peny kandrahana. Izy koa sakafo mavela, satria ny tatela tia moa zany tatela resaka planta toa ny tena ny asa aminazy. Ny eritreritra zay a, fa anangana toerana, Ampromprobuna ny ekoturisma, fizantany. Ao marumza, ary manatsara ny fiaina sekolia, miara-miasa amin'ny sekolia. Za, zay to Madagasikara, dia bidebe ny mbola tsy mianatra. Kanefa misy za, za mbola kely, tsy ampitona, niasa, manao asa mafy. Reo ny tsy maintsy toana ny reo za, zy reo, reo fukulun any futun reo any, no vaulana, afana mamunzi, reo za vaboar mampiavaka. Ano marum sa? Di ina ng one nisti dia buong kaso. Repa mina na buong kaso siya dia mantende ang tiyas. Dia feo ah di kakali gigti. Di in kakani yah mis buong kaso. Di in ba manir di na pumanir di la sa in. Dia bukan kain isti manir levonnya di las asbia. Ia sama yang film Baba Kut. Ache kan entah mana. Mak, go, hai, ru, ten. Abu Tonggo Kut itu tuh memang nak bina insan. Mesti apa ni lebih ni nasi, apa ni lebih sesi. Mesti eh, ye cerit ni, macam macam sah kauf ni. Zaman zaman beli na yuk matu, beli na yuk la zaman demi demi sah kauf wan. Apa ni? Pakar, zona tiada jalur terluar fakir tinggal ruang jalur piar. Wen dapat lagi tak fomisa terai sazo wara demangan cukup tiada de midi midi ngambani dengkir. Saki tunggu ampuzat tanya, mampu di bulan wan jalur tanya. Di baca kan wai ni tak fit sakit win dirig. Mai tenle alam itu mampu di bolam buk ni am ni bi tayir ni. Ko fajakan. Rawu teka Christian dia ti ande aita zan Jerusalem zan is inde po yon fienan. Rawu ti Islam ti aita zan la mixan. Rawu le ti na ti zavo buar ti aita zan mateka skar zan is inde mande yon fienan ni. Satia itian misen roa. Reva cita ni reva manzavu ti manzavu na mandak sai. Kanya fa reva maita ndreo zava buari, miavaka, reo zava maniri, reo bibi, reo vargi, reo tanala, reo bibkeli, reo vurni, reo sawani, le rano kurina madiu, te mbola mirimiru chantena we, mbola misi azotou zani. For Outstanding Island Environmental Achievement, the 2023 Seekology Prize is awarded to Jonah Ratsimbazafi. Of Madagascar. On behalf of this ecology board,
of directors and everyone here and everybody that cares about our planet. We'd like to present this to you. Thank you very much. We'd like to now invite Dr. Jonah to come and give us some remarks. Wow, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable attendees of this ceremony, it is a great honor and uh, a privilege for me to stand in front of you and to have the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I would like to extend my thanks to the organizing committee for inviting me and for the best owing upon this prestigious award. As I was preparing the speech, I would give this for uh, this evening. I had a deep reflection about what I could tell. Because I know that by standing here, a lot of people, friends around the world, co-workers, family would be following this event with interest, even losing sleep, other, other eat for some of them. Right now, at this time, it's uh, 5 a.m. in Madagascar, and I know <laughs> that there are people following, watching this event. Given the importance of this event and of this assembly, I was prepared to make a very elaborated and sophisticated speech. <laughs> I decided, however, to speak from the bottom of my heart, to bring the message I would like to share with you tonight. I think, I think that all of the winners of this prestigious award have in common the achievements of a number of progresses in the field of environmental protection. And I wanted to humbly share with you a part of my story that I led me and that led me today because of, as the saying, goes, every success story has its beginning. To begin with, I would like to tell you about how I heard, how I heard that I was the winner of the Psychology Prize of this year. Have I already heard about psychology? Yes. But I would never think I'd have to have the honor to be nominated 
as a participant, as a recipient of this award. And uh, on an evening of uh, the 3rd of July at 7.03 p.m., I received a call from someone I never knew or meet before. The person told me she had good news for me. What news did he ask? And she replied, you are the winner of the Psychology Award 2023. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say back then. I just kept saying, thank you, really, really, thank you, thank you, many times. That person, that person is with us here tonight, Mary Rodolphe. <laughs> Again, thank you, Mary. I am the one who is receiving the psychology prize this year. But uh, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't be standing here without all of the people who work with me. I am talking about the entire GERP team, the local communities, and the indigenous people and all of the categories of people. I can't name here, like the stakeholders, the various managers and the funders. So as I stand here, I represent in all of those who work with me, but also my family and even my country, Madagascar. It is out of consideration for all of those I represented, but I had all of the more likes to simply express myself with the feeling that come from my heart. As I like to say, my life is like uh, an iceberg. People often see the success but never the struggles I had to face and the road filled with obstacles I had to go through all of these years. My passion for nature began when I was just a kid. My parents were the ones who drew me closer to nature when they brought me and my siblings to the zoo of Timbazaz. Timbazaz is the park in Tananarivo, in the capital. Back then, I was just happy to discover a new animals, a new animal. I consider it like the cats and the dog, just another pet who had the particularity to live in the trees. I didn't know until I was a college student, but the lemurs were an endemic species of Madagascar. Well, as life went by, I spent many years wondering, what is the purpose of my existence? Why I am here on this earth? I finally got an answer for those questions. I am born to say the lemurs and to be the voice of those who have no voice, the lemurs and the local communities. How did I come up to, to that? Well, I used to be a paleontologist. And when I went down on the field to search for fossils, I discovered lemur traps, 
and where and even some dead lemurs in the remote area and dangerous areas where I had to work. That deeply moved me. And then I said to myself, the fossils can't wait under the ground for now, taking care of the creatures that are still alive is more urgent. Now, if I have to summarize in few words the reason to my success, I would be the power, the power of partnership, the power of collaboration, mutual listening and mutual trust. From the beginning, I knew my battle would be a long campaign. As trust is not gained overnight, but I knew my mission and objectives I was aiming for, and I knew I couldn't do it alone, but I needed other people to attend this objective. The local communities had their role to play in it. They could bring something to the greater purpose of the mission. So, one of the first steps we undertook with the GERP was to get closer to them. When we started to approach the community, we faced many problems. As they thought that GERP were taken to their land, so, once the part of this region to be defined as a protected area has been delimited, we made our first priority to help the indigenous people to get a legal ownership of the land. As soon as we own people trust by helping them, we begin to work in a spirit of collaboration that led to many achievements as the collaboration was based on a dependence, was not based on a dependence, but on partnership and mutual listening. It is easy to tell that story now, but trust me, but at that time, we felt highly vulnerable in everything we have undertaken. Thankfully, the whole team adopted a mentality and a motto to never give up, to turn each disappointment into courage during those harsh times. Today, I am now convinced and I can proclaim that the power of courage can take you to a level in life you can't even imagine. One of the results of our successful work with the local communities is the total cessation of bushfire for charcoal production and hunting activities in the new protected area of Marmiza in the last seven years. This was made possible because instead of a top-down system of governance, the authority was given to a platform including many categories of persons, the young ones, the elders, the women, the farmers, the village safe chief, a disaster happened afterwards. The tree nursery in Manum, for instance, which was created in collaboration with the local community, was completely destroyed 
by the cyclone three years ago. None of this, the destruction of material assets doesn't worry as much, doesn't worry us much because we know what the foundation built on the power of trust and partnership between the GERB team and the local community is already well established. Now, even without the help of GERB, the local community can go on with what we started together. And if that was possible in Manumbu and Marmiza, why wouldn't it be in many regions of Madagascar or even in other places in other places of the world? I would like to end this speech by giving you a message. I hope you will bring home, I will bring home, you will bring home a message I learned from this part, little part of my experience, but I shared with you tonight. Conservation is always difficult when people have little access to food, to education, and to health care. Before we can accomplish anything, we ought to build first the foundation of trust. Then the partnership can lead to the success of our mission. Let the voice of the local community be heard. Let's keep learning and listening. Generally, speaking it's never easy to change things to reach the objectives we want to attend if we focus on the difficulties we cannot move forward we can't move forward with negative feelings or thoughts in closing i encourage all of us to remember that each of us here has the power to make a difference. No matter how big or how small or small, but we can use the power in our hands to make these changes. Now, I would like to borrow and to close with a poem by Beth Strano. Together, we will create a brave space. Because there is no such thing as a safe space. We exist in the real world. We all carry scares and we have all caused wounds in this space. We seek to turn down the volume of the outside world. We amplify voices that fight to be heard elsewhere. We, can, we call each other to more truth and love. We have the right to start somewhere and continue to grow. We have the responsibility to examine what we think we know. We will not be perfect. This space will not be perfect. It will not always be what we wish it to be, but it will be 
our brave space together. And we will work in it side by side. Thank you once again for this incredible honor and uh, let us work together to create a brighter and the more promising future for our primate cousins, for our planet and for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That concludes our Psychology Prize ceremony. Please take back to your colleagues in Madagascar and particularly the lemurs. I will. That there's a wonderful group of folks here in Berkeley, California that care deeply about them. We're so grateful. Thank well, you. Eric Patel, while you're standing up, we're so grateful for your great work. Thank you. We're so grateful to our psychology staff, our directors and fellows. And we ask you to visit with Dr. Jonah in our dessert uh, reception yes, uh, upstairs. You. So thanks again for being with us. Thank thanks you. for all your support. Thank you so much. Thank you.